we found at least in 20 other books of the Bible, and there are probably more, but at least 20 other books of the Bible have references to God bringing his people out of Egypt. That's why it's such a, an important basic record in the Word, tremendously important. At least 20 other books in the Bible, and I'm sure there's more that we have been able to find, where God refers to the deliverance out of Egypt that he wrought for his people. That's why I thought it was certainly worthy to spend so much time on at the rock here as we talk in terms of going into the prevailing word of the promised land stuff, so to speak. Or anyway, I had some reason. Anyway, go back to Exodus. But it's mentioned so often, it's just remarkable. It really gets our attention to the many lessons that are here. Then in chapter 14, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp. Then he names all these specific areas. Verse 3, For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. Verse 4 of chapter 14. I should have read you. I didn't finish 13. We should have read that. Verse 20 of 13. And they took their journey from Succoth and encamped in Etham in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. Remember, that's what the word Exodus means, a way out. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Isn't that beautiful? They were to keep moving. Now, sure, they had to rest at times, but he gave them light at night so they could keep moving. And the cloud by day was a magnificent protection from the sun. The sun was so unbearably hot in that desert, it gave them shade. He shaded them in the day and gave them light at night. Isn't that fantastic? And also in the desert areas, you know, it can get incredibly cold at night. So the fire by night would have also provided the proper warmth. God had their own ventilation system set up for them so they could get as far away from that land of bondage as quickly as they were willing to move. Isn't that something? God just supplies our need in every regard. Like we've shared this week, man, they're flooded all around us. And we just had a little rain to make sure our equipment worked right, you know. Just a little rain so we could uh, justify buying all that rain equipment and wear it a little bit. Keep it cool. Give me something to tell jokes about. See, God's good, isn't he? <laughs> Beautiful, just like that. Verse 22, he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. And I think the word says throughout the 40 years that cloud protected them. And yet they still at times forgot about God, forgot about his goodness. People are really, can get real dense, can't they? So you just have to stay on yourself in a loving but vigilant way, day by day. Sanctify yourselves, keep yourselves from idols. Cleanse ourselves from all flimminess, filthiness. There it was, filthiness. Filthiness of flesh and spirit. Remember 2 Corinthians 7, 1 that should have been in 6, 19? That's right. So he got them out of there. But Pharaoh hardens his heart again in verse 4. God tells him he's coming. At the end of verse 4, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Jehovah, and they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. Verse 5, And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. Why? Because devil spirits controlled their heart. Got them all mad and arrogant again. And they said, Why have we done this? See, the spirits are berating them for letting God's people go before he could kill the believer's line. That we have let Israel go from serving us. Look how mean those spirits make people. Lazy, mean, and arrogant. As if they owed... They, deserve, they owned those children of Israel. And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots. And boy, this was the armored divisions of that day. It was very terrifying, the horses and the chariots of the Egyptian armies. This is like the first tanks that were ever seen. People just couldn't stand against them. And all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. 
and the children of Israel went out with an high hand. That's fantastic. To go out with a high hand, it doesn't mean they went out with their hat in their hands. Oh, woe is me. Thank you very much, our wonderful, benevolent Pharaoh and Egyptian taskmasters. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for allowing us to leave. No, they went out with their heads high. They went out with a high hand. They went out and said, by the way, give me that gold, give me them jewels, and give me that sword. Sure, anything. Get out of here. Please, leave. They went out with a high hand. They went out with their heads held high, like when Paul and Barnabas were improperly in prison. They said, no, you bring those magistrates down. They imprisoned us against our rights as Roman citizens. They come down and let us up. Oh, yes, yes, Massa Paul. Yes, Massa Paul, we come down and do that. Yeah, we do. That gum unbeliever creep. Melon heads. Thump, thump. <laughs> come on down, bring us out. See, more than likely, Paul and Barnabas thought of this record when they were ready to be taken out of prison, you see. I love that. Went out with their heads held high. Well, that hacked those spirits off. That hacked off the ego of Pharaoh and his people. My goodness, they owe us. We own them. Look at the arrogance that spirits, you know, they didn't own them. They had no right to them. See, they built their whole stinking civilization for them, did all the hard work. They just sat on their Egyptian asses and told them what to do. Ate their grapes or something. Drank their wine. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army. So he not only had the armored divisions, he also had horsemen, men on horses. So to a foot army, this would be impossible. This would be intimidating. Like a bunch of infantry taking a bunch of tanks on head on. This is, again, the adversary stacking the deck. So somebody better believe God or they're going to get wiped out, aren't they? So you just don't get shook by the senses realm. No matter what's going on around us in this year ahead, all the baloney the Pope's trying to pull, all the disarmament our government's doing, all the insane financial policies of our nation, all the saber rattling of nations around us, or whatever nation you live in, you don't let it shake you. Moses looked down the barrel of 600 chariots plus horsemen and believed God anyway and God just what you'll see is he held them back with that pillar of fire he moved the pillar of fire around with the cloud and held them back so that the winds had time to move the seas back and dry the land out and get those two and a half to three million people over and then let them go just set an ambush for them and Moses is the one that had to never break in his believing had to see it through to the end all night he believed God as those waters were piled on a heap and that land was dried out and he sent them over decent and in order, order organized. All night that pillar of fire and that cloud held that Egyptian army back till they were safely on the utter one side and then say, fine, you want to come? Come on. And they come. <laughs> Isn't that neat? More than likely, he kept the mud. He wouldn't have muddied it up right away, or they'd have piled up. The mud started from the middle of the area. They got on dry ground out once so that the whole army then started getting clogged up so they couldn't back up. See, God figured all that out. He clogged them down in the middle so they all got in there. Okay, now we're all in. Okay, Moses, drop your arms. Drop your arms. <laughs> Woo! Children of Israel standing over there watching this whole thing. More than likely, they set up bleachers. <laughs> passing around the popcorn. Here it comes, here it comes, passing around the Cracker Jacks. Passing around the Way Disciple Burgers, or whatever we call them now. Passing them around, you know. Here it comes, here it comes. Let's just walk. Boom. Yay. <laughs> standing ovation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good job, Mo. Good job. Now, where we need something to eat, Moses. What's going on over here? You know. <laughs> eat an Egyptian. They're floating all over the place. <laughs> wow. So here they come. Moses says to him in verse 13, Fear ye not, stand still. You got to obey if you're going to see it, the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. See, they watched it. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, he must, this must have been some humor, ye shall see them again no more, and by the way, forever. 